Today, I want to talk about what not to do when you're going to be performing peels. So many people have absolutely wonderful peel experiences, but then there are those that end up with something negative happening. For the most part, these negative experiences can be reduced or even eradicated with some basic knowledge. So I'm going to give you some tips today so that all of your peel experiences are positive. Listening to a friend or the internet instead of the manufacturer. This is a biggie. We all have different skin and therefore different needs. So your favorite vlogger may have normal skin. She's been using acids for years and her complexion's very light. And on the other hand, let's say you have medium skin tone. You'll find your skin easily irritated and have never used an acid in your entire life. The stronger peel that she's using won't work for you you need to use a milder acid peel or even just start with a daily acid serum like our serum 15 and then work your way up to a peel. If you start off with the stronger acid that someone else is using, you'll be looking at red, burning and irritated skin in the mirror. Not to mention the fact that since your skin is a different color, you may end up with post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. So the lesson with this one is do your own research directly with the manufacturer and never use something just because someone else did. This isn't makeup. This is an acid. Not preparing dark skin properly. I used the different skin coloring example prior so that I could talk about this one. There are many, many people out there with darker skin that have used ridiculously strong acids, such as higher percentages of TCA, like 30 or 20, without issues, so far. I wanna stress right now that this is not the norm. More than half of the people with melanin-rich skin will end up with PIH if they don't pretreat their skin prior to applying an acid. PIH happens when a strong irritant is applied to the skin. It inflames and then the skin turns dark, up to several shades darker, and becomes very difficult to lighten again. I will pop in some pictures of what happens when darker skin types use acids that are too strong. It's not good. It's so hard to treat. Please, please, please pre-treat. Call us gorgeous, but we want to give you the best chance out there to have beautiful, clear, balanced skin and not a dark, blotchy, embarrassing mess. So always ignore any internet advice out there saying that TCA 20 or 30 is just fine because they never had issues. Well, it's not. And you will end up with a big problem if you don't follow our advice. Always start with lower percentages and make sure that you proceed slowly and with great caution. Use your Fade Bright or Hydroquinone two times per day every single day for at least two weeks and preferably up to four or five weeks if your skin is darker. And wear SPF of 50 or more always. Using too high of a percentage this one I also attribute to the internet. There are a lot of vloggers out there who are all about using this high percentage and just doing one peel. That's not the way to get beautiful skin. The key is using the acid in the lowest percentage you can that still gives you the benefits you need and then repeating it over and over and over again. You want to work up slowly not apply an extremely strong peel and cause pigmentation and redness and prolonged irritation, you'll apply a peel series. That is six to eight peels in a row to get a nice end result. At that point, you can continue on and do another series if you still have problems to address. Or 
you can stop for a few weeks and then do a peel periodically to keep your skin looking great. Skipping the directions. Many times I'll be talking with someone and they're telling me they did X amount of layers of their mandelic acid peel or glycolic peel and I'm a bit confused at that point because you don't layer hydroxy acids. They're just timed and then rinsed off to neutralize. So why are they applying it that way? I'm going to assume that it's because they didn't read the instructions. Maybe they heard something about a TCA or Jesner's application and just assumed all acids are applied the same way. Well, with acid peels, we never want to assume anything. Always read the manual and apply the peel according to the instructions. Also, always read any warnings or contraindications for your skin type or skin coloring before you apply. Don't wax or shave prior to applying a peel. When you wax or shave, you're removing dead skin from your face or body. That's protective skin. If you apply a peel right now, it's going to be deeper than you ever intended. Now, waxing is more aggressive than shaving. If you're getting waxing done, please wait one full week before applying a peel to your face or body. Same thing if you have peeled and then want to do some waxing. Wait until the skin is 100% peeled and feeling normal again. This can be anywhere between one or sometimes even two weeks. Men, if you want to do a peel and you don't have a full beard, you can apply the acid right to the scruff there and not have any issues. If you want to shave, we suggest that you shave at least one to two days prior to applying your peel. Don't mix treatment modalities. There's always someone out there wanting to combine needling and peels and laser treatments and peels. Yes, you can use all of your favorite treatments, but you need to space them out, not apply them in a single sitting. We suggest waiting one week in between your treatments. So if you had a microdermabrasion this week, Wait until next week to do that peel, or you just did a peel and want to do some needling? Wait one week after your peel before you do your needling. Same with anything. Understand that your skin needs downtime. You need healthy, healed skin before you stress it again. If you don't follow these recommendations, you're going to end up with slow healing, irritated, and possibly even pigmented skin. Treat your skin with care and baby it in between sessions. Stopping retinoids before peels. I want to stress that everyone has a different skin tolerance. Some are just fine to use the retinols and Retin-A right up to the day before their peels and others are more sensitive. As a precaution, we recommend that you stop using your retinoids for at least three days and up to seven days prior to applying your acid peels. Retinol or Retin-A can cause increased sensitivity in the skin. If you're applying your peels and they're much sharper feeling than they used to be, you can probably attribute that to your retinol use. Make sure to give your skin a break prior to your peels to avoid this excess irritation. Luminosity isn't forever. Yes, our Luminosity 0.50 Retinol is truly amazing, Mwah! but it isn't meant to be an everyday product. Our 0.50 Retinol is applied for about three to five days after your TCA or Jesner's peel was performed. Apply it the first time right after you rinse off your peel, then again the next evening, and again, and again each evening until your skin starts to show signs of flaking. Now you can stop, seal up your bottle or jar, put it away until the next time you do your peel. Do not pick at the flaking skin. This is a tough one, as those flakes are as tempting to pull on as a pimple is to pop, but try not to do it. I have a couple of suggestions for you. If your skin is flaking, tiny baby flakes that are dry and itchy, wash your face. Use your fingertips, 
or one of those small facial sponges or even a rough washcloth. Circular motions and wet skin will help to get some of those off easily without pulling. Then rinse well and apply something super hydrating like our nano hyaluronic or our emo oil or a healing oil to your skin while it's moist. If you are excessively dry, seal that in with some Aquaphor. That works great. Don't worry, it'll be over in a few days. Another option for you is to use an enzyme mask, such as our antioxidant enzyme mask. Let natural enzymes dissolve the dead skin that's ready to come off instead of pulling at it. You can use an enzyme mask as often as you want. The danger with pulling is that if the skin isn't ready to come off, you will end up removing an area ahead of schedule and you'll be left with a red mark. Many times that red mark will turn into a dark mark after a few days or weeks. We don't want that. So exercise caution. And if all else fails, wash your face again. Do not go into the sun. This is a biggie. Your freshly peeled skin is super sensitive to irritants and UV rays. Going out in the sun could cause a quick burn and will most likely cause hyperpigmentation. We understand that dark skin doesn't burn easily, but after a peel, we're all in the same boat and you can have problems. Always make sure to apply an SPF of at least 40 or preferably 50 if you're heading out for the day no matter what your skin coloring. Wear a hat if possible, or long sleeves and pants if you've done peeling on your body, okay? I hope that this has helped you understand what not to do when you're ready to start performing peels. Take care to follow our recommendations and you'll get the very best results possible. If you still have more questions, just reach out to us. We're here to help. Have a great day.